What's up, ballers? Jacob here with All Drive No Drop and Mr. Tickle from Tickle My Pickle. David, how are you doing today? Are you ready to talk pickleball? Yeah, I'm actually really excited for this one. I think we've got a lot of paddles coming out. I think people are really curious about these. I'm excited to talk about them. Oh, yeah. I think this might be... I thought spring was like the busiest paddle season, and it really was. Like I was just hitting so many, but this, uh, I guess, getting ready for the holiday season, it makes sense. Like They're just trying to crank as many out. And maybe they're just timing the releases. And then, like, we had a lot of stuff get pushed back, too, that was planned. So mm-hmm. it's just kind of like a perfect storm of, like, I've, I've been busy trying to hit everything, compare everything. And I, I know you have, too. So really excited. Today, it's, we are going to go a little hard on the paddles. I do have a couple of topics uh, to bring up. One is going to be a surprise for, uh, for David here. Um, but we'll see. I, I think he might be into it. I think he might be into it. All right. We'll, we'll let, I I don't, it. don't comment on that until you see yeah. the topic. All right. but yeah, a lot of paddles today. Uh, I'll give you a quick rundown. We're talking about the new Vatix, uh, the Neonic Primes, the Diadem, which is, I think, coming out October 29th, the new Diadem Icon Infinity Pro, um, some Hudefs, Bread and Butter Invader Alien, uh, the Gherkins, uh, Volair Controls, Pickleball Apes, GBS Sports, Kiwi Labs. I think that's it. Maybe there's another random one that we throw in there. We'll see. But first, let me talk to you about something that I... So I've been playing for over three years now. And every year I see this surface again, this topic. And then I, like, I go look into it, but I really can't find that much information about it. So it's almost like they want you to know, but mm-hmm. they don't want you to know unless you're willing to join. And I, if anyone listening has participated in this or would like to be interviewed and tell your story, I am interested. I think people are interested in like what, like what the point of this is or, you know, I guess just to hear a story, but David, let me ask you, have you ever played nude pickleball? Or I have, have not. You, do you know anyone that has done that? No, I have not. Okay. I, have you hear, have you heard the stories about nude pickleball? Do you see I those? feel like I've heard it briefly on the discord, but okay. I, is, is it even legal? <laughs> is it legal? I I mean I I don't really know what the laws are about nudity. I stay fully clothed uh, unless I'm in the shower, so I'm not really sure what the laws are. I do know in some research, there's quite a few nudist resorts. When I started looking into this, uh, and it seems like you know this is like, and it, it makes sense. Like I guess if you're into that lifestyle, mm-hmm. uh the pickleball crossover probably happens because you want something to do at the resort. But I think that there's just a lot. Of, so I think it's kind of dangerous to, to play nude. And I'm just thinking like all the times that I've been hit and like how much the clothes really like protect you. Mm-hmm. Um, like, do you wear a cup? I don't, you know, like, I don't know. <laughs> Do you see any I feel like I haven't been hit nude? that many times. Like even like down there, like I've never been hit there. Oh well, so. I guess uh, I yeah I have. I've been hit down there, and I feel like the shorts, the shirt, you know, like everything, like kind of breaks the impact a little bit, or just you know, like it it helps. But yeah, I don't know. It's uh, it's it's something that like always surfaces, and then there's always like a like a thumbnail or a picture, you know, of like a whole group blurred out or their paddles mm-hmm. like covering things. I just found it interesting that like, it always seems to surface every year. Like, I guess be probably like one person picks it up and then like, if people keep picking up the story, but yeah, I don't, I don't know. It's just, uh, I just found it interesting. My pros for it. I, the only pro I could find was like, you don't have to wash your clothes after, but there's, I got yeah. a lot of cons like going to get sunburned, um, going to get hit harder with the ball um and there's other things but i don't know if i really want to get into it but uh any any thoughts on that topic i mean i guess the pro is you, you would have an even tan so oh, you're even not, tan. not gonna have that farmer's tan think about that one too uh, yeah but... that's real that's really it so yeah. drop it in the comments if you uh have experienced nude pickleball or if you know anyone that has uh 
yeah that's it that's it not really much yeah maybe if like, <laughs> if they want to have that next podcaster match at some like resort like that you're gonna have to <laughs> oh, TV studio their first 18 plus video <laughs> oh well they i'll let them decide i don't know if i'd partake, in yeah. partake in that they'll have to like blur it out but then these can't monetize it um yeah We'll let, uh, are you talking about like it was a pickleball studio and pickleball effect guys just did that? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. It, maybe, maybe that's something that they can do to spice up their next, uh, their next podcast battle. Yeah. I don't know. We'll let them decide on that one. Um, mm -hmm. I'll move on. I'll move on before things get out of control. Um, <laughs> MLP, Major League Pickleball. I used to be really into Major League Pickleball. I thought it was way more fun to watch than PPA. Mm -hmm. And I guess I'll say this is two reasons. One, because I saw matchups that uh, I never saw before. And then I think the second one is I was just sick of watching the same people win over and over. So it was good to see, like, I don't know who's going to win. Yeah. Uh, and it was fun just seeing uh, the teams get drafted. I love, I love like fantasy football. So drafting is really exciting to me. I follow like the NFL draft, so I like how they get to draft players. You get to people got you know conversation going about it. But with the playoffs coming up, I just saw that there's announcement the MLP playoffs are coming up, and I made me realize I just have not been following this season. It just kind of slipped by me. And I think it's just because I don't know what's going on. They keep cha the problem is they've changed the rules so many times since the start of season one, and they keep changing the rules sometimes mid season. How is the average fan supposed to even follow this when even like hardcore fans can't follow it unless they're really really invested in yeah. getting the information? And sometimes that information isn't publicly available. You kind of have to know people associated with the teams to even get the information i mean are you following this stuff at all are you interested in mlp or do you think they just they need to step up their game if they want to save what they have yeah i used to be a huge mlp fan actually like when i first saw it i was like this is amazing like i don't even remember which tournament it was but i didn't, I didn't know any of the teams i barely knew the players but just watching the energy and um watching like how close the matches got and all these dream breakers, it was really fun. And I thought it was way cooler than PPA and I always wanted to go to an MLP event. But like this year, I just, I don't know what's going on. Like I never, I don't know if it's like marketing on their side or like if I need to follow something, but I just don't know when the matches air. Um, I only find out on like Discord, if someone posted like, oh, is this person just won some match? I was like, oh, MLP happened? I didn't know that. And yeah, yeah I, I don't know if it's like they need to I guess find a better streaming platform or I it might just be advertising because I just don't know when it happens. Yeah, that could be a drop off too. Like used to be on you I think it always used to be on YouTube to stream, yeah. but now it's only on Pickleball TV, which is available through Amazon Prime. Mm -hmm. And like I don't mind watching it there, but I also don't know exactly when it's on. And then sometimes I look and see like, oh, it says this time. I go to watch, it's not on. Mm -hmm. Um and then sometimes I'm like, well, I don't even know who's going to be on. So if I want to watch a certain player, certain team, and I go to do that. And then also, I don't know what anything like the matches mean. I'm like, okay, like we're, they're playing, but like, I don't know what this means. Like, is this win worth what points? And like, yeah, what do those points mean? Whereas before, at least like every weekend they played, there was money on the line. And that meant like the players cared a lot more. Like, I think with this whole contract situation, like even I'm less invested because I'm like, well, I don't even know what they're playing for. Like they all already make mo their money. You know, if they win or lose, like, like you, we're watching something that has no stakes. Um, yeah. And it just, you know, like, I guess they have stakes for the future when they get their next contract, but I think a lot of them got like two or three, I think they got a lot of three year contracts. So I feel like some of them are just like, well, three years, that's my pickleball career and I'll do something else after. I don't really care if I win or lose now. And I mean, when, when you watch something, um, you know, like a tennis match or something, it was like, Oh, like there's a million dollars on the line. If you win or lose, it's like, okay, I'm a lot more interested in this game yeah. because these guys really, really care who wins. Like, mm -hmm. you know, when there's that big price prize difference between winning and losing, I, I feel like everyone's more invested. Yeah. And I'd like to see that, uh, you know, put back in, but I, I don't know. They, they, they need to do a better job if, if it's going to exist and I don't, 
I'm I guess sure when they started the too, they just had like all the teams kept changing. I just never, never kept track of what was happening. And, yeah, like they redrafted. Like, and strange. then with, with their whole, I don't like the they how they did the draft where you get like fake money and then you can use real money to buy the draft slots. And I'm just like, just make everything equal. Uh, I know they because they keep trying to raise money this way, and it, it's like when you keep asking for more and more, it's like those people that have bought the teams and they thought they were going to like do something with those teams now you're just it's like a money pit like you bought a team and now they're just asking you for more and more money and they don't even generate revenue yeah i would i'd be like what what in the scamosity is this because it's i don't know it it seems like a giant scam to me uh for those team ownerships especially now that they've merged it just Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. Hopefully, it, they figure something out. I do enjoy watching it in the past, so I don't know. We'll see. But you got to make things even. Like, uh, what is it? The uh, the the one of the teams they just didn't spend any real money, and then they got like just a crap team. Um, I think the Utah Black Diamonds. Uh, they have like yeah. Tyler Lung and uh, I can't remember. I think original they they their original team isn't the same. It was like Tyler Lung, Callie Joe Smith. Alex Trong and someone else, and it's just like all last round picks, worst team in the league. You knew they weren't going to compete. It's like, what's what's the point? Like you're already getting a team that you has no hope off the start. But yeah, I was rooting for them though because Alex Trong actually, I think she like, I don't know if she still lives around here, but she's like somewhere close by in Virginia. Oh, is that's where she's from? I think she yeah, moved she... to Utah, when, but I'm not sure. Potentially, um, yeah, I don't know. I yeah, use, I mean, nothing nothing against before. them, but, I mean, yeah. it's just, like, your team doesn't have hope if you get all last-round picks in any sport, really. It's just, like, yeah. I mean, that's just how it is. Um, I don't have anything else to say on that if, unless unless you do. No, I'm just, right. you know, I'm hoping they can figure it out because, you know, it, it is a really great um, alternative to the PP, and I think it's a lot more exciting, a, sure. bigger, a bigger way to, like, grow. Um, yeah, I mean, I played team – I mean, yeah. did you play team tennis growing up in high school or at all? Did you yeah, I did. okay, yeah. I love I love playing on a team for tennis, and I I mean I imagine pickleball will be in high schools one day, and you'll be playing as yeah. a team. So that would be cool to see. Um, so well, just one quick update on uh, the PB core testing, the power testing stuff for USAP. It did come out that the rhombus ripple, and I don't know if it's both of the ripples or just you know maybe the R one tested at point four three. So. It, and the limits at 0.44 so it sounds like most paddles will probably be good to go from what we have out there um this is like a fresh ripple right like not one that's like yeah broken, so it? that's okay. the that's the one thing that's not really clarified is if it's it seems like it's a fresh ripple because if you, the the difference between the early batch when they're broken in and they're they're even hotter is a lot different so i imagine yeah. that wouldn't pass so i know that they said that they have i don't know exactly what the machine is but it does sound like they have something that's going to replicate like you know like a whole bunch of hitting sessions on it but how many how many hits is it going to get um and our company is going to try to disguise it by breaking in you know uh it seems like like originally gearbox did intentionally do that like they wanted it to break in after it got tested. Mm. So that's one thing that's still up in the air. And honestly, like I don't have much faith in USAP solving it. Cause it seems yeah. like, you know, like they just want to like, mo- I don't know. They've taken so long to do anything. I, I really don't have much faith in them. And I don't, it does, the UPAA doesn't seem like they're really getting their act together either. So I don't know. We'll see. So right now it sounds like you, probably don't have anything to worry about with all the paddles out there so if you love the current power paddles it, you you probably yeah. are good so yeah the ripple is already at point four three. i think yeah you're yeah probably I good think, i think everyone's have. safe there uh so that's just my main update on that um besides that i think we're ready to get into paddles unless you had any other topics you want to talk about no i think we're ready to go all right let's go so vadix uh i forgot even the name of them but i don't have them right now the saga right the saga okay so love the designs i like how uh daryl's been bringing out these new designs when he launches a line and also on the old lines um Mm -hmm. also told him that i wish he would just keep you know 
interpreting them the whole time because like the basic black that is like the usual vatic it just you know it's so basic it doesn't stand out but these are beautiful paddles um yeah so let's let's hear about them like i i've seen like an infographic but you've actually hit them so what's yeah um oops sorry i was told to keep it brief but i think based on the infographs public knowledge so this is not gen 2 it's not a thermoformed paddle um they use it but i think people are calling it a paddle type clone that's what Braden said when I hit it, this I do consider this a power paddle. It doesn't feel like the paddle text. It's got its own feel to it. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a very poppy, powerful paddle. Um, but I'm just going to leave it at that. I don't know how much Darren wants me to say. So let's just say this is a power paddle. It's very different than the Oni, different than the um, the original line. It's more powerful than that. More um, powerful than the Oni? No, no, not, not the Oni. The, oh. Uh, the oh, they're Vatic Pro. Okay. Much, yeah. Yeah, it's different from the Oni, like gotcha. different in the feel. But... No foam in yeah. the core. Yeah, and then, I mean, if it's, um, you know, with that Gen 1 or Gen 1.5 construction or whatever it is, it's going to be more durable than the Oni and their Gen 2 line. So at that 150, and then I think it dropped down to 140 after a code. Like, this is could be a really good option. Yeah, that's a good price. Before. Um, especially if it has similar pop and power to say some of the paddle techs and then, but you have that foam to help with, uh, the sweet spot. And for me, like yeah. the, it helps with like just the, the stiffness vibration aspect too. So I'm excited to try, try yeah. them out and see what's going on. Yeah. All right. We won't go anymore. Cause he said he wanted to keep it brief. So we won't, yeah. we won't, we won't get you in trouble. Uh, yeah. the next up, we got the Neonic, uh, Flare and Flow Primes, which are Neonic's latest paddles, and I'll have reviews on the, well, the Flare, if I can get it off the wall. The Flare is coming out November 5th. Um, this is their wide body, and the flow, this is a 14 millimeter. The Flow is their hybrid. Uh, thought I had it. Got it. Me. Right there. Um, yeah, it's oh, nice. The flow. Yeah, so the flow 16 millimeters, both like the same tech, but one's 14, one's 16. Um, and I don't think they plan That's on true. making uh, 16 millimeter of the flare or 14 of the flow, right? I think it just. Not to my knowledge. Okay. I think that these are both excellent paddles. I've played the flare a lot more just as so that's coming out first. Yeah, and same. they're both going. I think they're both going to be 126 after discount, right? I, I know the flare oh, yeah. is. I'm pretty sure the so, flow yeah. is too. Yeah. So great price. Um, I think this is even lower than I was expecting for these. Uh, with you know the prices skyrocketing on a lot of things. Uh, it's not going to be the. We'll talk about the flare first because I I only played the flow a little bit, but I really did enjoy it, which I, I expected to because I like the. You know, I like the hybrid paddle, so I expected it to be my favorite of the two. But the flare has like not as much power and pop as the paddle tech Bant- or Bantam ESQs, in my opinion, in my mm-hmm. testing. Uh, but like, it just has a bigger sweet spot, feels better. Um, swing weight is 106 stock, uh, so you have a lot of room to to put weight on. I didn't, yeah. I didn't wrap the whole head. I did try it, uh, but I didn't think it needed it. I just went from the bottom to the top corner of 0.5 gram, 0.5 per inch. Uh, yeah, I just went up a little bit on the side to test it out. But yeah, it gets great spin. I feel like it dwells longer than uh, on the ESQs. Yeah, that's for sure. So I think that's really great. I think a lot of people, you know, like re- really are seeking that extra dwell time. Uh, a lot easier to control than the the paddle techs. Uh, you just don't get as much like the paddle techs have like this really tight sweet. Not like saying they have a really tight sweet spot, but like they have this extra power and pop sweet spot uh, that's a little tighter. That really, really you can really hit it hard. Uh, and these, it doesn't hit as hard, but I think it hits harder than. A, a lot of the other Gen 2s, maybe more than any other Gen 2 uh, paddle. What would yeah. you find when you were playing with it? Yeah, I hit this side by side with. Um, I, I, I did hit in the... that shape though, not not like. Yeah, yeah. 
in that shape. I hit it with the um, the monarchs, uh, the monarch all court, so the CFC one, and I hit their flare prime or not flare prime, the flare TI. That's what it's one. Uh, in Apollo, and then the Paddle Tech, the uh, ALW. Um, I think this was just like that step up from the Monarch. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, that's just, it shoots up from there. It's surprising that it's 14 millimeters. Um, plays really well for 14. Uh, I really like this one. This yeah. was probably one of my favorites out of the ones I did the testing on. Yeah. But I really like this paddle. I like the, the feeling is really good too. It's yeah. not as stiff as the Paddle Techs. Yeah. And really super stable super stable paddle i mean most are in this shape but i was really surprised like especially on those low digs to your like low backhand like you'll, you'll get a lot of those playing on the left side uh and just so smooth right there like i had no problem resetting the ball from there in transition mm -hmm. so uh yeah i think you'll probably have a review on this coming out too but i was really impressed really like it price points awesome yeah. Uh, so that's that's killer right there with that 126 price point. Uh, yeah, if you're looking for a wide body, I, that's I'll call it. I guess I'll call it a power paddle. I think the pop power combo, you know, it's not going to be up there with like the Gen three. It's but it's almost to the paddle text. Um, yeah, almost. I, I would I would personally classify it there. Um, yeah. it's just tough because it's that shape does you know yeah the, the shape the goes, shape but... limits you I, for sure like that shape does limit a little bit of the power just because you just you know that but uh also someone to... is this a new measurement uh, this is like a sidetrack but i forgot where it was i think it was probably discord and i was talking about like the sweet spot of a wide body compared to an elongated and they were mm -hmm. like telling me some measurement about swing weight divided by length or something and i'm like i don't even know what you're talking about then they're like the sweet spot difference is only one centimeter and i'm like i i don't know dude like i sure but like if it's definitely not one centimeter like the sweet spot like i'm just holding up two pals so here's here's like the wide body and here's i think the wide body sweet spot is like right here and then like an elongated sweet spot is like right here so it's definitely yeah. not a centimeter you know i i don't know I don't, that's not a measurement right like is that a new thing no because you also need to factor in like the balance point because yeah that also like it's not it just higher. like swing like there's different weight in the paddles too like if you wanted to yeah. you really could like make the, you yeah you i don't know anyway because with the flare they do have like extra weight like put in at yeah. the bottom i believe yeah yeah, a lot of a lot more companies are putting their own uh, weighting in there in the perimeter yep. now, which is smart. I mean, especially with how many people play the paddle stock, like, and they just pick it up. And if it doesn't feel good, so if you put that perimeter weighting in there, you'll get that first user uh, past that initial stage a lot more often too. Um, anything else on the flares or the flow? Did you hit the flow a lot? I've only hit it a little bit. I don't want to say anything too much, but I. Yeah. Both of these paddles, like the spin is excellent. Like, yeah, it's it's really really good. Uh, that's the I one thing I know is on both yeah. of them. I think this one, I think is nicer looking one. I really like the color. Oh um, yeah, the gradient edge. Like, I think they did that really yeah. well. Biggest gripe though is now I can't put tape on it, and I really oh. want to. Uh, I I think this one I would want to. I definitely want to add some tape to it. Uh, it's it's good. I just want to bump up the stability a bit, mm -hmm. and like you know tape the edges but i can't because it's then i ruin the look i know the i i that's the problem like i like you know doing different stuff with the edge guard but it is like you're i'm gonna cover it up so yeah it is a, a little sad but yeah. it does look nice looks yeah. nice uh for those b-roll and everything yeah. um all right so reviews coming out soon on those those are gonna be fun uh fit fifth for the flare and 19th for the prime or the flow prime yeah that sounds about right sorry everything all the names are f's for their shape and it gets really confusing for me uh it's you know whatever okay next up uh diadem diadem whatever you want to call it we'll call it diadem next up we have this diadem uh do you have yours on you or you i got the ghost so i got the ghost and so i get the halloween colors 
and this yeah. I think is called the Inferno. Same paddle, okay. just different colors. Yeah. Uh, so the Diadem Icon Infinity Pro is uh, edgeless paddle, fourteen millimeter, uh, right? Fourteen millimeter, yeah. Thirteen, yeah, four, thirteen seven. Thirteen point seven millimeter. Uh, probably a lot of like a lot of paddles usually are like not exactly fourteen sixteen, but they just you know they'll round up. But this one thirteen point seven. Uh, it is cool. So this is like the edge guard um, that you put on this edgeless paddle and you can change it. So mine came in all black all around and then I changed the sides. They give you like a little tool and you remove it and you can change it. So I made, you know, this is like my Halloween theme paddle and orange is yeah. my favorite color. So I'm like, that's perfect time. Pretty easy to change. I don't think that has been on any other paddle. So that's cool. And each of these I think was three grams. I don't know if you weighed yours. Um, no, I haven't taken them off yet. I, okay. I just hit it stock. So. Yeah, I think each of these is three grams. So, you know, it kind of adds that perimeter weighting already for you, which, you know, I didn't try it without these uh, offs, but, it, you know, I think that it probably made the performance better. I added uh, a three grams total here of tungsten tape on the edges. Just, you know, elongated paddles, I really don't like playing without weight. Um, so I just added that after a few games. And so let, let me read this tech real quick. Uh, for this this paddle it's a it's got foam in the core so it's got an eva eva foam wall dual foam core uh they use orange foam high density foam fill at the frame and the edges i don't know if the orange foam makes a difference uh eva foam inside the edge provides or well, they say it provides more power and extends a sweet spot that's generally what the foam does for you know it, it extends a sweet spot when they do on the side yeah um they say both foams can bind to eliminate vibrations uh, double grit surface, uh, maximum legal grit. They say 10 millimeter, 10 millimeter cells in the core and then the replaceable edge guards. Um, so all that, blah, blah, blah. Uh, you have the spray on grit. Uh, I'll let tickle talk about that more on why this doesn't use the peel ply, but, uh, I don't think that this is a gen three power paddle unless, it breaks in after a lot of use. Uh, I would say it felt like a 14 millimeter elongated paddle. Um, you know what you would expect? Uh, not actually as much pop as I would have expected. Uh, it is like a brought maybe a little bit above average pop, but not like anything extreme. And then the power is just average. I would say it's like got the power of maybe a bread and butter Shogun. Um, and then, like, it does have, like, a tighter sweet spot, I think, that, like, the sweet spot isn't as big, you know, 14 millimeter helps with the weight. But, like, I did find, like, in, like, the dead center of the sweet spot, I felt like I was, I could get not Gen 3 power, but, like, maybe a little bit of a power boost compared to, like, an mm -hmm. average uh, elongated thermoform paddle. But yeah. nothing out of control. Um, spins fine. I don't think it's, like top end spin uh but like not and not too stiff it feels good for an edgeless paddle but uh at the end of the day it's just okay and the price point's 200 uh 220 200 after yeah, discount so i don't think it's anything i would be like yeah yeah i'm gonna recommend this but i mean it's fine if you're a big diadem fan and you want this and you want, I like, I do, it's cool. Any, anyone in the future that's doing edgeless paddles, I like, you know, the customization and this is like, kind of like, you know, pre-weighted stuff. So that's cool. Mm. Uh, anything to add or anything to disagree on that? Yeah. I only hit it once, but I definitely agree. It's, it's not a power paddle. I don't even think it's as powerful as a 16 millimeter gen two. Um, I just think that they, I, how easy was it for you to take these the uh, um the edge guard off? It's it it's not like super easy, but it's not hard. Like it, you have to like so basically. I wish I had the tool. So it's like this little metal thing with two yeah. hooks, and you dig into the paddle. So here I'll demonstrate with the pencil. You dig into the paddle like this. You dig this out, and then it it has like two hooks. You just slide it, pop it out. So there's like I think four of these, maybe four or five of these, and you pop them all yeah. out, mm -hmm. and then. You just push it in. So you do need their special tool to do it. I mean, you could do it with like a knife probably too. Yeah. Um, or like a screwdriver. 
but it's not hard. It's definitely like one of the easier like modifications that I've done. Like uh, the Adidas metal bone, you need like a special tool too. But this, like, mm -hmm. I think you could get like a flathead screwdriver and probably do the same thing, and then it just pops in. It's you don't have to screw it or anything. So pretty gotcha. like I I do like that. Like those edge those edge guards are really cool. Um, so that's cool. Yeah. Like you don't have to tape it, and you can customize the color. I think the I think the orange and black one looks the best out of the between the two. Yeah, I got you got this white one. Um, but if you did, put, like, it's yeah, like, if you did make it a panda, then I think it would look cool. Yeah, the panda paddle. So they they came with white and white ones as your like other. Yeah, okay. I, was, I was wondering what was in that other thing, and then I realized it's the uh, the other part of the edge guard. Though I kind of wish they marketed it as like edge protection, like non edge guard, because it's like, the paddle doesn't have an edge like a the feel of a paddle with an edge guard yeah. like it's just it feels it's just an edgeless paddle with perimeter weighting that's yeah. that's all it is yeah um you know it's it's not bad and uh like you said like i do want to hit it more to see maybe if it breaks in and see if it changes because mm -hmm. like right now it's just i hit it for a day and it's fine um yeah I mean, I don't, you know i just do need to add lead tape to it and yeah. i'm now my concern is like hmm, will i ruin this edge guard and will i block the tools <laughs> the the area to like pop the edge guard off but yeah i also don't know how often i'd actually be replacing this edge guard. yeah so, i mean yeah. i don't think i would be changing it around like it was enough of a hassle like i'm not gonna be like oh i'm feeling like this today and i don't know like how many different colors they're selling like is it just the white black and orange but i think it's a cool thing in the future if they do it and then like maybe you could be like well we're selling three grams of this color and this color comes in six grams you're like that'd be cool if you know it's customizable all about that customization and and then that way your paddle instead of you know having this tungsten tape or wrapped up in it you could you weight it with different colors and then that way you don't have you know you could look good with your paddle yeah and it came you know that'd be cool so free idea for diadem there if you want to take it go ahead mm. you know give me a small commission it doesn't matter <laughs> <laughs> uh and you oh Oh, I'll save that for that. Um, thirty. Let's see, uh, who def? Did you? You said you had some who def paddles you wanted to talk about. Yeah, I shout out to Ariana Wilson. Me. Yep, <laughs> uh, luxury Gen One. I think that's what it's called. Um, basically, I I think, uh, pickleball medicine talked about it, and Farmer Linky also did. Um, hit it. Brief thoughts are just it's basically a lux with like even softer feel like oh, it has cool. the feel of the Selkirk Lux because it's that 18 millimeter edgeless um it's got a sharper taper so you can like fit both of your hands better right now it's only in the elongated shape and I think after a code it goes for like 130 so oh. if you like that feel of the Lux because there's not really a paddle out there that has that dense feel um because I think the Lux like about 20 millimeters yeah 20. um yeah it's like the 18 millimeters of the Lux or of the Selkirk or, sorry, the Hudef New Era Luxury Gen One, which they okay. can just pretty much call the Hudef Lux, because that's that's basically what it is—a cheaper version of it. No, that's a good thing. I still see people with the Lux out there. There, a lot of the Lux users really like their Lux. So, yeah. That's a... oh, also, that thing about the the grit—I think you brought it up. Oh briefly, yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah. For also with like the Selkirk paddles and the the Hudef has it, the spray on grit and the diadem. Um, I did ask Josh from Spartus about this and why he was using spray on grit on the ballista because this was at that time when like everyone was using peel ply and he basically said like the the cost to do it on an edgeless paddle is actually like a lot higher which is why most companies don't do it so gotcha. that's just fun fact for you guys that is a good fact I uh, just learned that too so maybe just a reason to not do edgeless I don't know yeah, well, the new 007 supposedly is going to be better. So Forever we'll see. Grit, I think yeah, that's what they call it. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see. Um, <laughs> uh, cool. All right. That's good, though. Like, if the only problem is trying to get a Selkirk user to switch from a Selkirk paddle. Yeah. That's that's the problem. They're like, who deaf? But it's not, you know, it's not Selkirk designer. So mm -hmm. that's that's the hard part. Yeah. Um, a uh, quick couple quick updates. Well, I guess just one quick update. Bread and Butter Invader uh, coming out November 29th. I think we'll have them soon. Uh, that one's coming with a hot sauce too. So we'll definitely, you know, maybe we'll try the hot sauce uh, yeah, when we get it on the podcast. We'll try that live. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, for the review too. But 
looks cool. Um, don't really know what to expect of it. You know, like the, it's the titanium hybrid uh, with carbon fiber. I don't know if it's just going to be kind of like a hybrid version of the Shogun, which I guess would be pretty good. People love the Shogun. So if it's just a hybrid version of the Shogun, I think it will probably be successful. Looks yeah. cool. Um, but yeah, we'll see. I don't think it's going to be anything like game changing, but I think it could, is going to be a pretty solid paddle. Yeah. Um, uh, talk about the Gherkins. Uh, did which which Gherkins did you hit? I, I hit, hit the hybrids and the long a little bit, the wide body. Um, these are. Uh, I want to say they're one forty after the discount. The they, they, they retail one forty five. One forty five. Okay, so like one thirty something. Yeah, it could so be not that. like a good price point. Um, you know, the silicone edge guards, I think it comes in more like purple, blue, and green, something like yeah, that. Yeah, the greens are the elongated green? and like okay. it's a blue for the hybrid. Okay. Yeah. And you can't, cho you can't choose which color you want. You have to get the shape and it only comes in that color. Um, yeah. comes in a nice box, uh, with some swag. Looks cool. I think that this is fine. I like, I only hit the wide body this week. There's just a lot of stuff I had to do hit with. I didn't like how like just felt too slow for a wide body for me i just felt like i wasn't getting the benefits of a wide body uh besides like the wider sweet spot but i just felt like the maneuverability wasn't great for me a little head heavy uh it's stable the power is okay like not bad for the shape not this is a softer i thought this was a little softer just wasn't for me uh, overall, but I'll try the hybrid and elongate it and see if I feel different. Yeah, so I try. Uh, did you? So two things I want to bring up is: Did you take this off the the rubber band? Yeah, I. So I don't play with the rubber band at all. Usually, I usually strip that off and put a grip on. Uh, I hate stock grips. Usually, like they're just slippery. Yeah, and I don't care to put the rubber band thing back on because it just takes extra time. You know, like. I'm trying to grip like five, six paddles. I don't want to mess with the rubber yeah. band. But this thing is like extremely tight compared to like all the other rubber bands I've used. <laughs> like this one is like, it's like stuck on here. Gotcha. So really you couldn't, uh, or you just didn't want to put it back on? Or do you I, I put it back on just because it looks nicer when I take the picture later. But gotcha. um, yeah, that's like one thing. I, I probably will just take them off eventually. Yeah. And second thing is at least the, the issue I had with the texture is like, when I'm doing the two-hander, it like it is digging oh, into my hand. I even yeah, yeah, I hear you. I I'm used to it now, but like if, when I first did it, I was like, I don't like this. I wrap the grip up a bit higher, and, and now it's better. But you know, it's like one thing to get used to. Um, so but I yeah, I hit it side by side. I actually hit their original or not the original, their budget line. So okay. this is the the one with the regular edge guard. Mm -hmm. um, I think I might actually like this one better. This one was actually surprisingly really good. Mm -hmm for like a hundred dollar paddle and that's one thing i did want to talk about briefly is just there are so many like a hundred dollar thermos yeah. and especially like on amazon you, and even amazon you can get them for like eighty dollars yeah and i've been doing like these like quick reviews on them where i'm like hey it's just a hundred dollar thermo but now i think we're getting to the point where like something like this compared to like the other amazon paddles that hit the same price point was like completely different like this was felt significantly like more well built so i really i did really like the elongated um and I think, yeah, so far I've only hit the elongated okay. for this one. And then this one, I think the swing weight was supposed to just be like two points higher. But I think the swing weight for the silicone edge guard ones, these play a lot higher than the, the, their actual numbers because this was very slow. It was reminding me of like a, uh, what's that? The engage pursuits, the elongated 16 millimeter okay. ones. Like mm -hmm. it felt that slow. And swing weight was only supposed to be like 122. Yeah, I but. think like this silicone edge guard is probably heavier than like a plastic edge guard. It just you know yeah. just with the way it sticks out, and I don't know, and it it just feels. I'll have to try the other ones, but the wide body one, it was I was really not like. I don't think I've picked up a wide body and been like, oh wow, like stock. Like I don't even want to add weight to this because it already feels yeah. just like slow in my hands. Yeah, I cannot so, add weight to this. Yeah. It is really stable, though. I will give it that. It, yeah, it was. It or it is very stable. So that's you know that's a benefit. And then some people might like it. You know, a little extra head heavy, but uh, 
I mean, I know you could balance it out, but then you're already getting like a higher stock weight. So we'll, we'll try the other ones, but the wide body, I already know it's not for me. Um, I think the hybrid might be the best one. Um, the, I think because like the wide body, like it's already a forgiving shape. I don't think it needs to be more forgiving. Yeah. There's like, too, I think there's too much weight there. And I think the hybrid's going to be the good mix. The elongated, I think is a bit too head heavy for most people. But if you like the original pursuits, you, you, know, you might like this one if you just want a softer feel. Okay. Well, I'll try to fit in the hybrid next week and uh, we'll continue our Gherkin, uh, <laughs> continual Gherkin yep. talk, I guess. Yeah. Um, next up, I hit the Volair controls, which are going to come in a wide body 16 millimeter and the elongated 16 millimeter, and you can get them in blue or green. Um, I think the main difference between these and the old full air Mach 2 Forza's, Mach 1 Forza's, is that uh, they have the Kevlar surface. These okay. Kevlar surfaces are stiffer than the old carbon fiber surfaces, and uh, they're a lot poppier. Um, get a little bit more power too. Uh, the con the or the uh, the Control One, which is the elongated, the blue one. You can get them in blue or green, each shape. But um, I liked uh, I like both. Um, you know, I used to main the uh, Mach Two Forza fourteen millimeter. Uh, this is definitely an upgrade on that because you get like the stability, the power, and the pop combined. Uh, price is going to be a little high in the market at two hundred, going down to one eighty after a discount. So high price plays really well. Uh, still get elite spin as you did with the uh, the, the old Forzas. Um, color's probably not going to be for everyone. The blue's probably a little bit more. Uh, also, is that green down. even supposed to be legal? Because I thought you couldn't have paddles that color. Yeah, I don't know how that's going to work. I think in MLP you can't, and maybe PPA, but that, mm. you know, USAP doesn't have any rules on the color. Um, no one complained <laughs> exactly about this when I was playing with it, uh, but I'm sure you, people will complain because uh, yeah. it's not when, like when they lose, color, yeah. But. The blue is better. I mean, the blue, uh, blue, blue is better, and it's like kind of like a lighter blue with the edge guard. Um, yeah, so maybe go blue if you want to be safe. Go green if you want every advantage you can, and you don't care about your opponent's feelings. Isn't um, that like one of those Michigan things that go blue? And go blue? <laughs> yeah, there it, 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 it is. Yeah, my sister in laws from Michigan. So yeah, so they actually before. just had the Michigan Michigan State game last night. Uh, I believe Michigan won. I'm not really a big college football fan. I, I root for Michigan, but really, you know, I'm, I'm probably going to get some hate. I know there's a couple people in the – a couple of my fans that really are into the Michigan and Michigan State stuff. But, yeah, this could be a good market in Michigan. You know, go green or go yeah. blue. Uh, and I believe Michigan won, but I'm sure people let me know in the comments if I'm wrong. Um, as you can see here, I'm a big Lions fan, and – uh Sorry, sorry to our opponents today, but uh, the Titans got smashed. Are you are you into football? Uh, no, but I know the Commanders won against the Bears today. There so. you go, 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 Commanders. No, they're good. But uh, I I know I don't know what the crossover between pickleball and football because I could talk about football all day too. So I, I won't I won't cross over too much. But yeah, Volaires controls I like. I'm gonna have a review coming out. I think they come out November 1st. I don't know when I can release that, but uh, I'll have a review on those. And then uh, I think you you said you did not hit those yet, right? No, I, I don't think I'm going to have time to slot that one in. All so. right. Well, there we go on those. And going on, Pickleball Apes, I only was able to hit briefly, but uh, we'll probably, maybe next week we can talk about those more. I just saw like an interesting discussion on the Discord about that they're op like people say opening up i guess as to say like the paddle is getting more power and pop i think that's what they mean when they say open up um uh -huh. is that what you interpret when they're saying opening up at least that's what, that's what i talking yeah, that's about. what i'm assuming i haven't hit mine yet they're still shipping so okay. I, yeah i mean I they look cool I, first first purple paddle right like first all purple they look good um they do kind of they do have a different sound so when i hit mine has a mm -hmm. different sound to it than like a gen 2 or a gen 3 paddle um it's like a higher pitch sound it's interesting uh we'll see they're looking into it to see like what the problem is and like people are saying that when 
these are more broken in. They like them even more, you know, because they're getting more pop and power. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, only played uh, two games with it, so no initial impressions were good. But uh, I don't want to really say anything about it now because I, I only played two games with it. Mm -hmm. uh, and then let's go. So someone was talking about GBS Sports Paddle, which yeah. I didn't even know about, but of course Tickle already has it. So what is so, this GBS Paddle? Yeah. So someone was talking about like how we shouldn't sleep on gb sports which i assume is this gentle boom sports and because gentle they said boom. aluminum and <laughs> this isn't the aluminum paddle that they're oh it's releasing. not the one they're talking about well, it's okay. not the one but i got this last year and it's they're telling me how they they use a new core and they're using aluminum so this is a full aluminum core and i don't know if you can see here but this is a really thin paddle oh what what, what did they advertise it as they didn't tell me. I don't have any specifications, but it's like standard. <laughs> they didn't even tell you. <laughs> Does it sound different then? Oh, it sounds like Kevlar. Like this is that high pinging sound that Chris Olsen hates. Very high pitched. And the swing weight on this is very heavy because there's a reason people are using polypropylene because yeah. plastic is light. When you use something, too heavy. You know, this thing, however how thin it was, like all of us were like, my wrist hurts, my elbow hurts. We put it away after one game. We have not touched it since because this is an injury waiting to happen. It, isn't the one they were talking about in the comments about an aluminum one too? Or am I making, I don't remember what they were that's talking about. That's what I saw. And that's why I left a comment saying like, I might, might not be safe for people to use. If it's if they haven't, in, if they've improved upon it, then it could be nice. But this one, like this is not a good paddle. And mm. I do not recommend people like see something that says aluminum in it and like pick it up blindly because this is gonna hurt you interesting yeah i no. i mean i guess gbs hey if you are a paddle company and you want to reach out to us go ahead like my email is in the description or in my uh youtube profile i think yours is too mm -hmm. you can reach out to us if you want um just come and tell us why your paddle is different or does something different or, you know, like explain it to us and don't do it with a marketing jargon, like actually give us the specs, the tech, cut it open and show us the pictures. That's nice. Don't tell me it's designed for whatever and does this. Like I want to hear what it, what it actually is. Don't, don't give me any marketing jargon. Yeah, it does. I was just so surprised. I was like, why is this so heavy? Why does the impact just feel so bad on my arm? Dang, so it's like a baseball bat. <laughs> Basically. Interesting. Yeah. All right. Well, maybe uh, maybe that's what they were looking for. Maybe not. Who knows? Um, and then you have an updated QE Labs. Is this the circuit? Yeah, I just hit the circuit again. Is um, this the 14 or 16? Software. This is the 14. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't think I'll do like a full review on it. Maybe just like a short, but mm -hmm. just want to let people know. But I, like thought about like after like a few more sessions with it, okay. but I I think it's it's a fine paddle. I think it's it's you know it, it's just the foam doesn't really change much except how the paddle feels. Mm -hmm. So it's a bit more like plush feeling than most fourteens, and I think that's about it. It's like it's not any more powerful. I don't think it increases the sweet spot at all or the stability. I think it just changed the feel. So if you just like want a softer fourteen millimeter paddle, like softer feeling, then this is an option to go for, especially because it's what 150 and then that drops down for a coat. So yeah. it's not a bad price. Just don't think the tech really gives you anything new, really. Yeah, I, I mean, I kind of felt similarly. I was, I thought like with that tech, like I was kind of hoping for a little bit more and it was fine, but I wasn't really impressed with the paddle. It wasn't anything special. But I mean, for the price point, if you like the looks and you're looking for a 14, I guess it's a high, it's 16.4 inches, right? That's what I think that's. Yeah, 16.4 and 7.5. Looking for a, a long yeah. hybrid pedal, I guess. Yeah. Um, you know, it's it's fine, uh, but don't get it expecting that Gen 3 power. Um, yeah. I don't think we have any more paddles currently to talk about. No update on the Ripple launch date. I don't know if that's ever happening this year. Has he, have you heard anything? I like, I think he just went like silent on that. Yeah, I haven't heard anything. Okay. Me either. Um, I just also mentioned I got the kitchen bag uh, in the gray. It's got orange inside, which is awesome because, you know, I like orange. Um, 
just got it this week, so I've only taken out a little bit. But, uh, you know, I know it's, it's $300. It's very expensive. Uh, it is a very premium-feeling bag. I think I've had, like, 10 different pickleball bags now. Um, nicest bag of all the bags I've had. Uh, it is on the smaller side. Uh, so if you're looking for a big bag, it's not it. It does have a lifetime warranty. That's really good. So if you, you know, like I'm thinking you'll get way more use out of a $300 bag than a 300 paddle or a $300 paddle with a lifetime warranty. More to come on that as I test it out. Uh, but so far, love it. Um, you know, it's I do usually use a bigger bag because I take a ton of paddles with me. So this more might be like a, a tournament bag, um, a quick bag. I don't know. We'll see. How many paddles does it hold? I think they advertise. So it has like one, two, three, four paddle sleeves. I put six paddles in here the other day. Uh, doesn't leave much room if you're trying to put other stuff in there. So I think like the main thing is you're trying to take like three or four with it. Uh, and I think like I have the ADV bag and some other bags. And I like, I'm not trying to take like 10, 12 paddles. Cause like, I, honestly, like I can't like for me, 10, 12 paddles is kind of hard to like process everything. Um, if you're trying to use all those in the same time, but, uh, yeah, I think like three, four, it'd be like the ideal with other stuff. Um, but yeah, it, it, you know, like it just like all the small parts you don't think about, like the zippers and, uh, the pockets and like the inside, everything's like that premium material. And it's not something I've really thought much about. Cause you know, like I'm sure you at the start like when you in tennis bags and other bags you're just like i'll just use whatever bags like big enough to fit my stuff and that's I mean, yeah. that's kind of what i did that's still me right now yeah. so so enjoy it a lot um i don't think i like any discount on it it's just free shipping with the codes um but if you are looking to get it i'll give more thoughts on that as it goes on um what bag are you using right now currently uh that 50 dollars vatic pro one because okay. i i don't really pack my shoes separate or anything and i also i only carry paddles like i don't carry a lot with me so okay. i just want like a big open space and that's all it is so i just shove sense. like well, like eight paddles in there because i a lot of for a lot of arm for me to hit but for like other people to demo gotcha yeah i've been doing like like obviously the paddles and then like my camera um and now i need to bring the tripod but before i just had the fence clip uh but now i have to bring the tripod because there's no fences in like the lifetime fitness i play at yeah. that's really annoying like it's so much easier to clip it onto the fence than uh set up the tripod that was the opposite for that for for me this tripod i set that up for the fence clip i, I guess because the one i have like i like you have to angle it a certain way and i have to get the legs to clip on and then Do you have one that you like uh, it's like a clip that you like squeeze and then put it on or i got so i got one of those and then i also have another one that's just like it has like legs so it's okay. like a mini tripod that you like attach your i have i have both i haven't tried the uh one with legs like i've used that for my radar gun but i haven't tried it with a camera i always thought like it just takes more time with the legs yeah. because you have to like twist it through the fence and i'm like the clip yeah. i'm just like boom it's on and i'm ready to go uh but yeah, I mean, we'll see. I mean, the tripod's okay. I just have like a basic tripod, uh, but uh, it's just, it takes up more room is the problem. Like it does, yeah. longer and that's more of the issue. But it fit in, it fit in the kitchen bag. I took it, but we'll see. More, more to come on that. I don't know. I don't think I'll be like beating, like beating it up. Like I saw some people, like I don't know if you saw any of those videos where like they're dumping water on it and you know, yeah. like, <laughs> I, well, I know, I know in the kitchen videos, I think he was like running it over with his car and like just destroyed, okay. like, and it, and it survived. So it's pretty impressive. Like how much, I mean, like, I don't know what, when your bag is going to be going through stuff like that, but pretty impressive. It can take a lot of abuse and hold up. Um, I, so a lot of busy stuff coming up in November. I think we both have a ton of paddle reviews probably coming out and I have some like roundup stuff coming and um, I'm not sure what else, but like a lot of stuff, I'm sure a lot of people are planning to go hard in November and December with all the things coming out. It'll be a busy season. Uh, if you have any like topics or questions, feel free to drop them in the comments. We could do like a, a listener question segment next week. Uh, happy to answer questions i'm, I'm even want to i want to do something called like stories from the court like 
you can send if you want to send in an email with a story from your court or you know just or you can send in the email questions if you don't want to ask it in the comments um i just see like stories on reddit all the time i'm like is this did this really happen or did uh. someone just make this up because we know people make the stories up on reddit sometimes but i want to do like a stories of the court uh segment if it's good enough or just questions and answers uh besides that do you have anything else coming up you want to talk about uh, no, just, uh, you know, we've got those upcoming paddle reviews. We've got, uh, you know, I think people have heard the Neonix and then all the other ones that we've been hitting. So just got that coming up, like, you know, full thoughts after I get more PlayStations with them. For sure. Um, what, do you have any uh, tournaments coming up or anything or just, or what, 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 you got leagues or what do you, what's your like play like schedule? Mostly... Up? Yeah, just I got another season of the league coming up. Okay. Um, yeah, so I've got that to look forward to. I think my partner's in Korea right now. So oh, is it is a a partner league like you always play with the same person usually? Yeah. So my partner last season, he we like made it to the playoffs, but then like for the final tournament, you can't use a sub, and then he had to sit oh, it out. No, so, that's um, cool. We don't really have. I don't think we have any partner leagues around me. That would be a cool thing to get started. I think that's a better way to do the league, just because. You're playing like it's fun to play different people, but sometimes it's not to play fun to play with random people um, in like a competitive setting. Like some, you yeah. know, the league isn't really like some. I guess it depends what type of league. But I know some people take leagues very seriously. Others are like, well, it's more like I just like that fixed time slot to play. Um, but yeah, I think playing with a, a regular partner will be fun. At least then you get to choose who you're playing with. Yeah, we are Team Patrenesi. Um, we got the name from Marshawn Lynch, actually. I like it. Big, big Marshawn Lynch fan. So, uh, <laughs> oh, I wish he was still playing. Um, but yeah, a lot of stuff coming up. Drop those questions in the comments. I don't think I have. Oh, did have one other thing to talk about. I won't tell you which company it was, but I mean, you know, but I won't tell any anyone else. Um, if you email and say like, you have to consider me for your best paddles video in the future, we are considering any pat, like any paddle could be the best paddle, yeah. right? Like we yeah. don't know until we hit the paddle, but never going to guarantee a spot and say that a paddle's good without hitting it. Just in case you're watching it. I, I've realized there's a lot of paddle owners that watch the videos, even then you don't know. Uh, mm -hmm. So I'll just put that out for any f future people that want to put restrictions in the email to me. I won't talk for David, but never, yeah. never yeah. put a restriction. Yeah, every, everything's technically under consideration. Exactly. Like, you know, if it's good, it's, it's going to be there. So. Yeah. Yeah. That's all I have. Any last words, David? Nope. No, all right. Thank you cool. all for joining us. We kept it under an hour this time just for you. Or if you want it longer next time, let us know. But, uh, yeah, just a lot of paddle stuff. We'll get a good some good topics going next week. And don't forget to subscribe to Tickle My Pickle and subscribe to All Drive No Drop. We have a lot of fun stuff coming for you. Thank you very much for listening. Have a great one. and get Go play some pickleball this week. See ya.